we take a look at the vis visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, that's the small part that our eyes can detect. And then our eyes and our brain uh, turn that uh, energy into color. And so one thing we talk about light and electromagnetic radiation is light and we are going to see the speed of light that's how fast light travels is always a constant so the speed of light uh, we represent by c and then c equals 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second we converted meters per second into miles per second, the speed that light travels would end up being 186,000 miles per second, or something like 6 trillion miles per hour. So light, this type of energy, which has no mass, uh, travels quickly. In fact, nothing travels faster than the speed of light. So if we are looking at a spectrum, blue light would be on the short wavelength portion of the spectrum. In fact, when we go to lab, we're going to see blue light occurring at about 430 nanometers. So this is blown up to a great proportion because our eyes are not going to be able to see that distance. So that would be the wavelength of blue light would be this distance here green light is going to occur, it's got a longer wavelength, and it occurs around uh, 530 nanometers. So the wavelength of green light is a little bit longer than the wavelength of blue light, and then red is the longest wavelength, and that, is, again, is just in the visible part of the spectrum. So if we look at a rainbow, we're always going to see the colors of the rainbow in order. So Roy G. Bibb would be going backwards, red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, and violet. So the wavelength of red light is approximately 680 nanometers. We are not going to be doing any calculations, but what I would like us to know is that any radiation or light that has a short wavelength is going to have a high frequency. And then anything with a high frequency is also going to have a high energy. Frequency, remember, is the number of times the wave bounces up and down per second. So a short wave can repeat itself more times per second than a long wave. So this is always going to be the case. Radiation with a short wavelength is going to have a high frequency and a high energy. A longer wavelength is going to have a uh, lower frequency and a lower energy. And I think I'm just going to go over here. The longest wavelength is going to have a low frequency also a low energy. And that really comes from uh, frequency is that symbol, the funny looking V, and the energy is the symbol E. And since the energy of electromagnetic radiation is this constant times the frequency, when this value increases, when the frequency increases, when it's multiplied by this constant, that also means the energy is going to increase. There's another mathematical relationship that explains the a short wavelength is going to have a high frequency. If we said small and big instead of short and high, it, uh, the relative relationship of those numbers might make more sense. But the wavelength times the frequency is always equal to this constant c, which we stated up here was the speed of light. 
So this value is constant. It can't ever change. So if this value goes down, if the wavelength goes down, the frequency has to go up because these two values always have to multiply together to give us the speed of light. And if we report the wavelength in meters and then we multiply that by the frequency, the frequency of units of per second, we're going to get the speed of light in meters per second. In the next slide, we're going to see what this has to do with an electron on an 